food industries dealing with liquid foods needs to transport liquid foods from one section to another section for the processing for example in milk processing plant milk is received in tanks and then this milk is pumped to the heat exchanger for the heat treatment for the pasteurization and after pasteurization it is further uh, transported to the cooling section and after cooling it is further transported to the packaging section so likewise there are many uh, industries which uh, processes the liquid food uh, the liquid food can be the honey it can be the sugar syrup it can be the fruit juices and extra extra to transport uh, these liquids from one unit operation to another unit operation we need to uh, select a pump and pump is selected on the basis of properties of fluids properties of fluids we must know the density of the fluid we must know the viscosity of the fluid usually the fluids uh, having high viscosity are thick they are thick and uh, the fluids having low viscosity are thin are thin and for the thin fluids we usually use the centrifugal pump and for the thick fluids we usually use the positive displacement pump to understand this viscosity let us consider a fluid which is uh, placed on a stationary surface let this be the fluid hmm? if this fluid is pushed from the from the top side if it is you know uh, pushed from this top side what is going to happen the uh, these abo layers will try to move will try to move in this direction and this layer will try to move the layer which is next to it but this next layer will oppose uh, this layer to move uh, in this direction so it will uh, produce a, a resistance it will pre produce a resistance so in this way we will get a gradient the upper layer will move faster uh, than uh, the lower layers they will also move but they will move slow uh, their velocity will be less and we uh, you know we assume that the the layer which is next to the ground next to the stationary uh, will it will be having the velocity of zero the velocity of the last layer which is next to the uh, stationary uh, ground huh? its velocity uh, is believed to be zero and there will be a velocity gradient you can see uh, the layer one uh, ha is having velocity you know uh, high velocity then this velocity decreases you know the two uh, line three line four and five there is a gradient and this gradient is uh, actually known as velocity velocity profile it is known as velocity profile now if we consider uh, that uh, the, the the fluid was initially uh, the uh, it has started from this point to, to uh, this point so there is a displacement of this layer from one place to another place let us consider this point as a and this point as c and this has displaced the line one has displaced from this uh, c to c dash c to c dash and uh, it has produced an angle theta it has produced an angle theta and uh, uh, we came to know that the velocity is different uh, at every uh, layer of fluid huh? so there is a velocity gradient uh, from 
a to c dash let us uh, let us consider a to c dash is, uh, as dy the thickness eh? dy is the thickness ac which is equal to ac and let us uh, consider the c c dash c c dash uh, equal to dx the displacement of uh, layer uh, 1 from c to c dash now uh, if uh, we can write tan tan theta this angle tan theta is equal to uh, delta x divided by delta y delta x is this so this is the base and divided by dy it is the perpendicular and base divided by perpendicular is equal to tan so i can write tan theta equal to dx divided by dy but let's consider the the uh, this theta is very small small angle so i can write tan tan theta is equal to equal to delta theta tan theta is tan delta theta is equal to delta theta because the angle is very small at that time uh, uh, tan theta is equal to theta now i can write uh, delta theta is equal to delta x divided by delta y simply i have removed the tan now and nothing else now we have delta theta is equal to delta x divided by delta uh, dy hmm? let me uh, draw the figure again we have different layers of water of or any fluid and after uh, applying some force on it a velocity gradient has appeared this is the a this is the c and then it has deflected dx which is from c to c dash hmm? this is the theta hmm? let us consider uh, the velocity of the top layer as du because you know the velocity is different from uh, from this uh, layer one to uh, when we move downwards uh, the there is a velocity gradient let's consider the velocity of the top layer as the du if we know uh, the uh, du is equal uh, is equal to uh, del x divided by del t how much distance is covered in uh, in change in time or i can write it as uh, delta x is equal to du dt delta time huh? I can substitute this in this equation and uh, we'll get delta delta x is equal to uh, du delta t divided by dy it can be it can be written as delta theta divided by delta t is equal to du divided by dy i have simply transferred the delta uh, t to left side now delta theta divided by delta time is uh, it is simply uh, the shear rate it is simply simply the shear rate which is represented by this symbol huh? it is shear rate is equal to du divided by dy you can write this huh? uh, in this way and again uh, we know this uh, shear rate this shear rate is you know it is directly proportional to shear stress which is represented by the sigma shear rate is directly proportional to uh, sigma it means that uh, the force uh, it means that when we increase the shear stress shear stress the shear rate shear rate increases there is the direct 
proportionality hein? they are directly proportional to each other and this curve represents the viscosity as shear rate is directly proportional to shear stress so I can uh, substitute this in the above equation I will write uh, the Sigma is directly proportional to du change in velocity along the uh, thickness eh? along the thickness we, uh, it is the velocity profile which I have mentioned the above uh, layers will move faster uh, as compared to the lower uh, layers of the liquid so this shear stress is directly proportional to the velocity gradient velocity gradient and if this proportionality is removed uh, constant is added here which is the mu which is the uh, which is known as viscosity uh, du by dy so it is this mu which will determine this velocity profile so for uh, thick uh, fluids this uh, mu uh, value of mu will be different for thin fluids the value of the mu will be different and du by D, uh, dy is the velocity profile so this is the final equation we know the after producing the force after uh, producing the force on liquid uh, there will be a velocity gradient du by dy eh, which will be dependent on the mu now if we uh, uh, if we write mu is equivalent to sigma sigma upon shear stress eh? du by dy is also known as shear stress eh? I have just transferred the terms from one side to another side so we can write it as sigma uh, it is the shear stress it, it's Pascal it is unit is Pascal upon second inverse eh? so the unit is Pascal second also we can write this mu as you know it, uh, it is Newton per meter square into second eh? I have uh, divided the Pascal second into Newton per meter square into second which will be equivalent to Newton can be further you know divided into kg m divided by second square meter square into second and after cancelling the terms we will get we will get kg upon meter second in CGS system the unit is uh, unit is unit of mu uh, viscosity is uh, dyne second upon centimeter square which is known as poise which is known as poise so uh, this this is the CGS uh, unit of the viscosity and uh, Pascal second is the SI unit system there is one more term known as kinematic kinematic viscosity which is uh, equivalent to dynamic dynamic viscosity upon the density of that fluid so kinematic uh, viscosity uh, represented by V is equivalent to mu viscosity of uh, dynamic viscosity divided by density so it can be written as meter square second so the unit of kinet kinemit uh, viscosity is meter square second this was all about the viscosity of fluids hope you understood this thank you